on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love said to me, hello and welcome. My name is Nathan Lomax, co-founder of Quickfire Digital. Hello everyone, I'm Gav Willis and I'm from Search 7. Today we're going to bring you our latest episode from our new campaign, The 12 Days of E-Christmas. I hope you enjoy it. There's going to be loads of tips, loads of advice getting you ready for 2021. Hello and welcome to the fifth day of E-Christmas with the one and only Kevin Gibbons from ReSignal. Kev, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Great to see you. ReSignal are the organic growth specialist working across the world of e-commerce. Now, having worked with the likes of ASICS, World Remit, uh, and many brands in between, Kev is becoming one of the leading names in the world of e-commerce, and we're delighted to have him on today's show. Now, of course, before we grill Kev about the world of e-commerce, where it's going, where it's been, and what a crazy year 2020 has been, I must introduce Rudolph himself, Mr. Gav Willis from Search7. Gav, how's it going? I'm going good. How are you? Hi, Kev. Hi, <laughs> Gav. Yeah. I, hey, I definitely feel is... like I needed to have dressed up for this. <laughs> Don't worry. That's all. Kev didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gav, kick us off then. Look, we've got about 10 or 15 minutes. Keen to ask Kev as much as we can about where the industry's been, where it's going, how we can give as much insight to our audience as possible. Right, let's go. Right, Kev, to uh, bring you up to speed is seven quickfire questions. To what we did there, seven quickfire. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on, question one. Kevin, so please tell us a bit more about your role at um, ReSignal. Yes, yeah, so my role as founder, I think for anyone else that's run an agency can understand this, that my role has developed from doing everything into trying to do nothing. <laughs> and um, I think over the years now, it's just been a case of how do I build a team around kind of what are the core things that we need and then have specialists in different areas. So for me, I still oversee kind of like the vision and leadership of the company from a direction point of view. I'm still very much involved in new biz and onboarding of clients. Um, but I would say we, we have a team now that is very strong and capable in terms of delivering the work to the clients. So I'm typically involved as a maybe like a escalation point and touch point but now um much more from a a growth perspective of still trying to get into that position of working on the business not in the business um which i think every agency owner would like to get to and i wouldn't say 100 percent crack that yet but definitely trying to work towards it for sure when you hit that there's a holy grail for many agents owner right now before we go into this yeah. next question i saw a little insight into your trophy cabinet the other day from all these awards you've been winning it was quite phenomenal <laughs> to see all those trophies on the desk i'm interested to hear obviously this year has been so tough for many different sectors but actually a couple of sectors have really thrived and yeah. some have done far better than certain and one of them i think is fair to say is e-commerce and obviously with you guys especially in e-commerce i'd like to think that you guys have also had a healthy year and so keen to understand what are the plans leading up to Christmas? Is it just more of the same? I guess you're inundated with pictures, et cetera. Um, but for those listening, what does ReSignal look like this year? And what is it going to look like next year? Yeah, no, good question. And I think actually on the awards front, one, one point I have around this is as much as you can look at kind of like agency KPIs of like how well have you done from a financial perspective, the one thing that always gives me much more confidence going into the new year is our results for our clients. So if we're doing great work, our clients are happy, we've generated them a lot of organic revenue. Um, and if we've won awards off the back of that, it's nice to benchmark ourselves against the industry. I'm feeling pretty confident about the next year. And the flip side of when I've not felt so good about things is our financial metrics might look great, but I feel that underneath it, our work is a bit lacking. So yeah, I think for me, one of the big things for next year is the fact that I do feel like we've seen very strong results for our clients um, during COVID, which has been great. Some have been in, in, in e-commerce, so we've been, I would say, certainly riding the wave, but also trying to make sure we're making the most of that from their perspective. And I think there's, there's a strong opportunity for those clients to do more in terms of just the overall digital transformation of the business in terms of shift of spend from potentially offline to online, SEO being a quite often a large driver of organic revenue, of online revenue coming from organic, that I think we're in a strong position in the market and I think we're doing a very good job for our clients right now, which, like I say, I kind of like, I'm not saying that to brag or anything else, it's more, it's just a very, and 
there's definitely been times in the past where I wouldn't have been able to say that confidently, yeah. but it definitely, yeah, kind of for me, gives me reassurance and confidence that in the next year, I think the market from an e-commerce perspective is looking very positive. It makes perfect sense that people will spend a decent percentage of their budget online. And I think if it's, if it's working and it's paying off for them from a ROI perspective, then um, yeah, it, again, that, that feels like a good reason for people to do more of it. Massively so. We always say that, right? It's yeah. about the return yeah. on investment and it's around, okay, if you put X amount into the machine, what am I going to get out of the machine and how yeah. can I then make that scalable going forward? And it sounds like you guys have got the perfect blueprint for that. Yeah, Kev, I mean, I mean, you should be very proud of the year. I mean, winning those awards, having really good, happy clients, delivering great work, that's fantastic. I mean, this year has been a tough year for so many people and for you guys to evolve and adapt in the way you've done, but then keep looking after and getting great results for your clients is fantastic. One thing I was going to say about that is how have you adapted and how have you seen the pandemic affect online online behaviours and how have you kind of pivoted around that to make sure you're still producing these uh, fantastic results? Um, online behaviours, I think what we've seen is, in fact, interestingly, myself and Nathan both did um, separate video interviews with Paul Martin, the head of retail at KPMG. And that was quite eye-opening because what I found before that is I was talking to people in our team, people in the industry about the impact of COVID. And with all due respect to all of them and myself, we don't know what's coming next. Whereas actually when talking to someone who is the yeah, kind of head of retail that understands more about the economic trends, it was really interesting to get his viewpoint and then to maybe layer that over from a, a digital perspective. So his general view um, was that a lot of the transformation would have happened, but it would have happened over a seven to 10 year time frame, And it's now happening over a 12 to 24 month time frame, And it's just very much accelerated in terms of uh, where we're going. So I think for us, it's probably the same thing of, I don't think it's changed our plans, but it's accelerated them. And it's like, how do we push more towards the online businesses, the e-commerce businesses, and maybe help some of the others to transform um, if we can help them to get up to speed. And then I think to answer your question in terms of behaviors, one of the things we've paid a lot more attention to this year is certainly within e-commerce is stock control. So previously it would have been about how do we advertise and promote what is the most popular products by search volume, conversion rate and seasonality. Whereas now you have to consider there's an impact to this might be uh, one of our clients is ASICs. This might be a very popular like Gel Keanu running shoes, for example. Mm -hmm. and the latest model might be very popular, but if it's out of stock, then actually we should be promoting something else. And yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say that's something that we've necessarily factored into. How do we create content? What are we optimizing? How do we promote in the past? But we're we're much more aware now that it's not just a game of getting traffic. It's how do we and not just converting, but actually how do we convert for the stuff that they have products for? Yeah, I think that's really interesting because the sign of fulfillment has been a big factor with so many companies. As you say, you can do it based on search demand, but it's how you're actually going to fulfill that, that order at the end of it. So it needs to be kind of all come together and aligned, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. And yeah, and I think that's it. Otherwise, um, we've had problems before actually with a travel company where they had very specialist salespeople and I mean, we don't do paid search ourselves anymore, but we used to. And they said it's kind of like the nicest backhanded compliment of we need to turn these campaigns off because we're too busy and we can't recruit. Really yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wait, we've just done ourselves out of a job. And it's similar yeah. on the other side now of, um, yeah, we, we want to get traffic and we want to get potential customers through the door, but all the right products that they, yeah, they yeah. have available. Yeah, exactly. So Kev, let's dive into the nuts and bolts, if you like, of going forwards and for those listening. I think they're all keen to understand, with organic search and voice search in particular, really starting to take off. I'm keen to think what you think the future of online retail is going into 2021. Obviously, you spoke to Paul Martin like I did from KPMG. Incredible guy with so much knowledge. But actually going forwards, what are your personal intakes of where we think e-commerce is headed? Yeah, so I think there's... A few different views. I think from the e-commerce side, I think understanding more about those consumer behaviours, what people are looking for at different stages of COVID as well, can 
early stage was very much convenience. Um, and now I think some people have potentially more disposable income and they're, they're looking at how they can spend maybe on the luxury goods that wouldn't have been on the radar at all and certainly saw a drop in the early stages. Um, in terms of how they find them, I, I find one of the interesting things right now when I look at almost like predictions of 2021 is the legal situation around Google and the antitrust stuff and um, monopolies. And I do wonder actually if there's going to be a big shake up of, um, yeah, kind of how that competition looks. I know one of the interesting things from the Google's core algorithm update that they've been rolling out kind of over the last two weeks. Um, we have a e-commerce guide where we track the top 250 brands in the UK from an organic visibility performance perspective. The biggest losers from this update have been Amazon. And I, I think that competition between Google and Amazon, if it wasn't fierce enough already, is maybe something that could really take off next year. And I do also wonder that when you look at the potential outcomes and scenarios from the legal side, certainly some of the stuff that's going on in the US right now, um, is this the time that someone else will launch a search engine? So Amazon seems to have wrapped up a lot of the market in terms of e-commerce, but from a search perspective, is there more that they could do? Will it open the door to Apple? But I, I think mm. certainly from an e-com perspective, it's Google and Amazon that I think you have to look at the most. Um, voice search, I think maybe has more of a place to play from an informational perspective, but I don't think it's there yet. Um, yeah as the, the link that Amazon would potentially like it to be between people searching and buying products from an Alexa, even with a screen perspective. I'm, I'm sure their sales are taking off, but in terms of that being a, a fair comparison to what Google are doing themselves or Amazon themselves through their own e-commerce channels, um, I would imagine it's a, a very small single digit, if that mm. percentage. So. Um, so yeah, I, I think for me, the, the biggest thing of interest will be how that rivalry and the legal implications play out between the, the big players. Brilliant, brilliant. And then Kevin, I'm going to ask a bit more about um, SEO in terms of the architecture side of it. So they've obviously been in search myself and with Search 7. We've seen a lot of clients in travel and hospitality who just can't continue advertising for their services and their products. Um, Turn to more focusing on their website, focusing on foundations, trying to get their own house in order, ready to be hitting the ground running come next year, you know, in terms of getting the, the content right, getting everything optimized the right way, and remo removing all those roadblocks in terms of Google. So when Google come and calls the site, they, they're kind of ticking all the boxes and they've got a much better chance of ranking highly. Have you seen this happen for a lot of your clients and how do you see this having a good impact going into next year with more, more brands out there focusing on their own websites to get them really kind of safeguarded in terms of SEO. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of clients as one in e-commerce in particular that we've just started working with and they're very re heavily reliant on brand and they're very heavily reliant on brand because they have a lot of offline stores and that drives the brand awareness because if you've got mm -hmm. a store in your hometown, there's a good chance that you would have just heard of them for that reason. Um, and I think now that that brand isn't being so much driven by the stores or at least having a store in itself from a online brand search perspective isn't a reason to, to have it. Um, people are now looking at, okay, well, certainly from an organic perspective, how do you rank for generic phrases, the consideration terms that people are looking to find your product when they don't have a, a brand in mind. And the SEO platform behind that is really important. So there's a lot of platforms, certainly from e -com in terms of the Shopify's, Magento's, etc. that I think some people have quite outdated CMSs and I think they, they have quite a tough job to move off of those. It's not, this is not a six month project. It could be a two year project in a normal world, but with the urgency of you've only got six months to make it work. <laughs> and for us now, we're, we're helping quite a lot of clients on a um, migration perspective between platforms just to get them up to speed and make sure that if you're doing a, a platform migration, the biggest risk quite often is that you lose your organic visibility. So we want to make sure that that's maintained and ideally set up in a way that 
beyond that maintenance you can then improve so um i think that's that's really the big thing it's more that people probably knew in the past this isn't good enough we should fix it but it was on a list of things to do and now it's top of that list it's uh, it's the only thing you need to do if you want to survive or like the first thing you need to do at least so, Kev, I'm keen to say, right, all bets are, are on. You've got to put all, you've got to put your house, everything, all on one thing, one trend that 2021 is going to kind of focus on in the world of e-commerce. What is the go-to thing that's going to happen, do you believe, in 2021 within the world of e-commerce? I mean, I think just from a consumer perspective, it's looking at um, the behaviours of the, the shift to online. I, I don't see that going back. I think people are now... Like Christmas shopping must be a great example during lockdown of I'd love to see when this comes out the percentage of online sales this year versus last year because it must be incredible and I, I think in let's hope that 2021 we're back to somewhere closer to normal at least and um, but I would imagine if you compare 2021 to 2019 I think you're going to see a big jump in online organic um, well organic definitely but just online in general um, the other thing on that is I always like there's a quote from Jeff Bezos who was talking about innovation and predictions of what's going to happen in the future and as much as Amazon are as innovative as anyone in terms of like R&D budgets of drones and um, voice search and everything else that they they've got enough money they're they're spreading their bets and they're they're trying to figure out what the next thing is his answer to what what's going to be around in the future was let's focus on the things that will still be around as opposed to predicting the, the technologies that might take off and it was for him it was people will always want convenience and they'll want things at the the best brands at the cheapest price and the quickest delivery time so they they really double down on prime how do you get firstly they've got the economies of scale to deliver at discounts versus some of the the other retail competitors and secondly they can get it to you next day if not the same day so that's their competitive advantage that they know that in 10 years 20 years if they're still delivering on that promise then they're still probably going to be doing pretty well so so yeah it's not always looking at what's new it's looking at what is working that isn't going to go away and how do you double down on that as well brilliant okay Absolutely fantastic. I mean, just want to say thank you so much for your time today. We're going to finish with one last question. Sure. Um, and it's the big one. This is the biggie. It is what is on the top of your own Christmas list this year. <laughs> okay, this is why I should read my email. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm terrible with this. And that certainly yeah. in the past, I've definitely been much more about experiences and things. I would much, like quite often, I couldn't even tell you like the last new year's eve i've had in the country like quite often it's just like it's my birthday um the day before christmas um new year's eve and it's always like the agency owner time of you can switch off you can turn your emails off your phone and just relax because nothing's going to happen um and i feel like that's been like my nice switch off that this year is not quite so easy to do um the one thing i have done a lot of during lockdown is just get into like running and I feel like this is my my sanity check of just get outdoors and do running and I have a place in the London Marathon that's been postponed until next um October yeah and I guess there's a nice plug for ASICS as one of our clients I was gonna say yeah the top of my list would be uh, some decent running stuff for, for training for next year. <laughs> if you're okay. listening, Asics, we expect that to be delivered personally by whoever to Kev's door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mate, as always, so lovely to have you on. Really great to catch up. I'm glad to hear things are going from strength to strength. I really encourage anyone listening to check out Kev. Go and find him online, connect with him on LinkedIn, get a call in with a bloke. As you can see, incredibly knowledgeable, full of value always helping clients and a real pleasure to chat with him. Okay, great to catch up. Have a lovely Christmas and I look forward to picking up and working with you more in 2021. Yeah, Cheers. likewise, you too. Thanks both. Thanks all for listening. Goodbye.